In part one of this video, I covered building the arm of the machine, its hubs and bearings, and the pulleys used to drive it. The pulleys are designed to use bead chain to simplify transmitting the drive through 90 degrees. I need to make a loop of chain the right size. However, the normal method of joining the chain using one of these connector links won't work, since the connector won't go around the pulleys. I need to make what's known as an endless loop, with no connector link, only chain made into a circle. There's a special tool you can buy to do this. They are called bead chain pliers, only they're kind of expensive. Especially for a tool I'll probably only use once. So I'll just make my own. Here they are, not the prettiest pliers in the world, but they'll do their job. Here's how they work. First, the chain is cut to length by cutting one of the links between the beads. These links are known as dumbbells. You'll see why later. The beads have a seam along the side where they are crimped together. The spike forces the bead open. It can then be removed along with the cut in half dumbbell, exposing the end of the next complete dumbbell. Here you can see why it's called a dumbbell. The bead at the other end of the chain is wedged open. The end of the dumbbell is placed inside. And then crimped shut again. One endless loop. A pair of idler wheels is all that's left to tension the chain and finish off the arm of the machine.
The bolt adjusts the tension. Not much is needed, just enough to take up the slack and keep the chain on the wheels. Now the arm is complete, I can start on the frame. I'm drilling these holes using the radius function on my DRO. I could use a hole saw, but I don't have one close to this size. I'll weld these three bars together to make an H-shaped stand for the column. I'm going to use a car windscreen wiper motor to drive the arm through a toothed belt and pulleys. But first, as you can see, the arm is quite unbalanced. I'm going to add a counterweight to balance it. This will reduce the load on the motor. Note that this counterweight only balances the mass of the arm. The mould will be mounted centrally and will balance itself. Here's the machine running without the counterweight and here's an oscilloscope trace showing the current drawn by the motor. The trace is very noisy but you can see how the current increases every time the end of the arm is raised up and reduces on the way down. Compare that to running with the counterweight and you can see the difference. Not only is the trace much flatter, the peak current drawn is also much less, meaning I can use a smaller power supply. A quick paint job and the machine is finished. I also built a controller for it which is admittedly overkill, but I wanted a timer to shut the machine off when finished, and also a variable speed control. OK, time to mould something.
This mould measures 180 mm across. I can fit larger moulds in the machine, up to a sphere of 300 mm in diameter. This mould is for a tyre for an RC model. It's a good example of something you might want to cast hollow rather than completely solid. I'm using a two-part polyurethane rubber. Some experimentation with the volume of resin and speed of rotation is required. I actually found this speed was too slow. The machine will run between about 1 and 12 RPM. Around 7 RPM worked much better. The cross section of the part should be nice and even like this, but spinning too slow or too fast and it ends up looking like this.